<sighs> Why? Why? Thanks for the hint. Thanks for the hint, guys. Um, we should be we should be back. Um, OBS Studio is just. It's just I don't know if it's something about the laptop, about OBS Studio, about Windows 10 plus two cameras plus screen capture. I I have no idea. I think I will have to to re-upload um, this thing as like one continuous stream because YouTube once you once the stream stops and you have to restart your your streaming data flow, um, it actually or it usually screws up quite a few things, including like audio video sync. Um, on the build of the Fisher Technique printer, it actually it cut the entire printout it, uh, or the entire printer build out. It just showed the first three minutes which, minutes, which was the loading screen of the starting soon screen, and the rest was gone, which is like, <laughs> why you do? Why you do this? So yeah, this stream is going to be a re-upload. Um, I'm going to get that going as soon as we as we finish it. Right. Um, what am I saying? So extra length on restart. This setting right there. Um, that's like the easy kludgy version um, to get rid of something like, um, yeah, something like those blobs. So if you see those those blobs that, um, yeah, that happen once the once the extruder starts extruding again, you know, just put a, a negative zero point one or something in here. Get rid of the zero there. Negative zero point one. No, don't do too much because if you if you're actually doing something like the there's the one um, if you're actually doing something that is geometry wise similar to this um, that's to make magazine test part printed on printed in rigid ink PLA on the Mark II if you're doing something like this these little spikes which are essentially just tons and tons of retract so retract lay down a fraction of a millimeter of filament then move to the next one and so on um, if you have a print like that then these spikes are just not going to show up because the the amount that you're you know adding as a negative um, in your there we go the amount that you're adding as a negative length on retract retract might actually end up uh, eating up the the amount that you're trying to extrude so just do like a, a tiny, tiny bit of, of negative uh, extra length there and these issues should go um, away. Yeah, right. That's that and of course um, reduce your retract length. Um, I'd always try to get retract length as low as possible just before you get stringy. I always rather have um, I rather have um, tiny, tiny strings because the strings you can just rub off. Um, but blobs like these, they will, you know, be in your print forever. Let's do a quick refresh. By the way, huge thanks to you guys for for um, playing along so well here and posting your uh, posting your your faulty prints. Oh yeah, right. That's a good one actually. So, um, bum, 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 bum. right. So what we're seeing here is top solid infill, not top solid infilling. <laughs> so infill holes. Um, there are some slices that are more prone to this than others. Can I find an example? Yeah, sort of. So, um, actually there's, there's another example of that frog and it's not showing that same infill issue on the top right there, but right back here you can sort of see some, some gaps. Now, this is kind of a, a combination of issues on this one. Right, F5 is a button to, to switch to screen cap. I should change that uh, hotkey, definitely. Now, what I'm guessing here is because like we're seeing here, it tries to bridge, but it's like, it's not making the gap quite yet. So um, what I'm thinking, one, it's too hot. 
temperatures are way too hot so the the melt strength is gone at that point melt strength essentially um, how strong your molten and sticky filament or plastic will be um, and that's especially important for bridging which this essentially is you're trying to bridge over infill infill is not a solid surface to print onto you're always trying to bridge between your two rows of infill that's you know so most slices will actually use bridging settings if they try to cover a layer of infill um, and that's the one thing there um, yeah temperature settings otherwise just increase top solid layers um, in this case it might not be that much of a help because you, you're already you know you, you're seeing how just the the, the bridging doesn't work um, low temperature more top solid layers and also try to play with the bridging settings so let's pull up slick 3r again um, bridging settings right here printing that's under advanced I think yeah bridge flow ratio so 0 0.95 is the default here so when the printer bridges um, instead of going full blast with the extrusion it actually extrudes a tiny bit less to stretch that string out um, this works for for normal layer height so like half your nozzle diameter in the layer height for that this setting works kind of well however what this might actually also be let's compare this yeah so this looks like 0 0.1 or 0 0.15 millimeter layers judging by how far these these lines are apart probably 0 0.1 millimeter um, on the on the print we're seeing there <laughs> um, the thing is as as your layers get squished together as they get you know thinner you are going to need better filament to actually make bridges or oh it's, it's bridges yeah to make proper bridges like that and to have them last so what i've seen is like 0 0.2 0 0.25 millimeter layers 0 0.15 to the most extent with a 0 0.4 millimeter layer i know that's a lot of numbers um, those those sort of layer heights will work reasonably well for bridges once you go below that once you go to 0 0.1 or 0 0.05 so 50 micron at that point bridges just don't work anymore because you're, you're stretching the filament out so thin already um, that it just breaks and i think that's what's happening there as well so maybe just up so yeah let's let's recap again um up the layer height this is probably 100 micron go to 150 or 200 um, turn down the temperature and play with the bridge extrusion multiplier setting if the slice of this was done with um, supports it plus people are suggesting in chat yes part cooling fan um, also helps to a certain extent though I'd try playing with the print temperature first um, by the way we, we got two three two two tips today um, in case you didn't know um if you check the video description there is a tip me link down there um so we got five euros from 3d printer creator thing saying great show again greetings brian the 3d print creator um thank you for that and one euro 84 i think that was two dollars or something uh from tech geek so happy you exist ha ah, thank you right let's do oh it's 7 p.m already wow i, I wasn't planning on, on doing a a 10 hour stream again <clears throat> not like that's gonna happen let's see what is this yeah so this one uh, okay so this one is actually I don't think I, we, we can do much there. Um, if you guys in chat have a suggestion, guys and girls, uh, guys and girls, may, might I say, we, we do have like 2% female viewers. Um, if there are statistically, I think there are like two and a half females in this, uh, in this stream, welcome to you too. Um, so yeah, um, if you guys and girls in chat have a suggestion for how to get rid of seams, Twitter chat, great. Good thing the camera is over there. 
Um, if you guys have a suggestion of getting rid of the seam, because I don't think this is, you know, we, we, we are getting rid of the seam. The seams are always just going to be there due to how our, uh, how our technology works, how FDM just works by having a starting and an ending point um, in each layer. Every print I know has those seams. I know they are amplified by particular filaments, by just having a particularly glossy filament. So if you don't like the way they look, get a matte filament or one that isn't as super, super glossy. But it's just, it's just, just a part of the technology itself. Um, so if you have... Um, yeah, if you have a, a textured filament, so like this one, which is the, what's it called? Filamentum Rapunzel Silver. That's the um, frog we printed on the Mark II Live build. This one doesn't have the, the start stop points visible that much. It has it visible on the tail a bit, but otherwise they're pretty well hidden. Um, slicers tend to, you know, tend to align them in, that fashion that we're seeing here sort of so when they're really aligned well like that you do you know that they, they obviously do stand out um as you guys are suggesting in chat um you can turn on the randomize layer start stop or randomize seams let's see if i can find it i think it's their seam position nearest aligned and random yep so if you use the seam position random, then it's just gonna spread out those blobs all over your print surface. It's not like they will be gone, but they will be placed in, you know, just random spots. Um, what I've actually found to work relatively well is the align setting, just because um, SlickTR is relatively smart these days when it comes to placing um, start stop points. So if we uh, let's see if we can actually show this off on this camera right here so the adalinda on the tail that's where the start stop points are most apparent it actually aligns it to the front edge of the tail which is its sharpest corner so in that case in that spot you're least likely to see them um, so these are right here uh, where else so on the wings, yeah, there's there's a, a bunch of seams, a bunch of start stop points bunched up there. Um, yeah, right there. And actually on the front, that's that's actually the smartest one. It aligns them if I have a pointy tool somewhere. There we go. Um, it actually aligns them in this ridge right here where there are fairly well hidden um, I think it also puts some on the other side, which makes this this one stand out a bit more. But yeah, that's the I think this is the align setting, um, and it works pretty well. It hides the seams in spots where you wouldn't see them typically. Of course, it's not going to work for every model, but it's a good start. Coasting, Jetman, coasting. Um, if you have, if your slicer supports coasting, yes, then um, that might also be a good option. However, it's it's still not gonna um, it's it's not gonna get rid of the seams. You, you're still going to have those start stop points. By the way, no, it's it's slick through R. There's a there's a three in there. It's it's not an E. It's a three, guys. Come on, be realistic. All right, let's grab one more. Refresh that page. Yeah, same thing, blobs. Um, well, hold on. Ah. Ah, okay. The, I think the, yeah, I think I know what this is. So we are seeing sort of two things. Um, one are these lines right there. There and there. And 
what you can what you can make out is these are irregular. These are not like a, a z axis wobble where they're just you know aligned and, and you know regular and stuff. These are relatively irregular. The other thing obviously are, are all these pimples on the on the surface here. So two things. One, these ridges and these lines. I'm fairly certain that these are just the spool dragging on the on the extruder because they are sort of relatively consistent but not and that's just you know the spool will turn a bit and then stop and then turn a bit and then stop again that's one thing the other thing right there these look like air bubbles like um oh yeah air bubbles steam bubbles water bubbles moist filament a well, filament that that has taken up water. I've just I've posted on today on Twitter um, a a post of just a bunch of filaments in the oven, and some filaments are are much more susceptible to that uh, to water uptake than others. And this is exactly what a a filament that is really wet looks like. It's um, yeah, you just get a an accumulation of of moisture of water in your hot end and as soon as it gets pushed into that that 250 220 210 degree hot um, heater block it expands it blows out a bunch of filament on top so these these bubbles we're seeing here they might not be hollow on the inside they might actually be a, a full you know filament blob and that's just the the boiled water expanding and pushing the filament out of the nozzle and down onto your print um <laughs> sauna printing yeah um pushing the filament onto your print there might actually be be um air pockets in there it depends on the uh, on your exact filament on the geometry of your nozzle but that's my suggestion there so when drying filament or when keeping filament dry that's probably you know you want to prevent it before it happens instead of having to work around it so what i'm doing back here um, on this wall, it, it comes up pretty much every steam stream. I've got filament out in the open. Um, the two filaments you don't want to store out in the open are PETs or copolymers. There, there, these guys, that's polycarbonate. These are also po po um, copolymers. Anything that is PET um, based copolymers, you, they, they aren't as sensitive to water uptake as others. But, you know, ideally you want to store them out of the, out of harm's way, more or less. Um, what's really sensitive to, to moisture, though, are nylons. Um, these are three different Tallman nylons that are in a box. I don't have a seal in here yet. But the ideal way to store, uh, to store filaments that need to be stored in a dry fashion, particularly nylons, PTs. PLA is less sensitive, but still... Um, it sort of it still sort of uh, takes up some water so you want a closed box with a lid that ideally has some sort of of a seal around it you want that you know obviously without any slits on the side that would that would suck and optionally you want something that that dries it so this is like drying salt for drying flowers and stuff um, and just you know get a get a layer of that in there that's going to absorb any water that gets in here you can use um, what's that stuff for for cat litter that grainy stuff what's that called um, that drying salt um, you can also get like drying packets that will absorb water um, in, in like home improvement stores and stuff put one of them in here just make sure it's sort of sealed and you're good to go take it out print it put it back in there when you're done perfect Silica gel, yes, that, that also works. You can buy that on, on eBay in like five kilogram bags. Um, and that really works pretty well too. Rice, yeah, but it's... Uh, I'd be worried about the rice going bad. Uh, bag. The rice going bad. Um, so yeah, do that. Um, like I said, PLAs, ABS, ABS to a certain point. I've had ABS that, that actually takes up a lot of water. Um, PLA does not as much, but there might be a degradation in print quality in, in like the strength of your parts, um, even if the print quality looks fine. Um, 
In this case, that stuff out on the wall, I'm not worried about that much because there's a dehumidifier in here that runs, I don't know, not 24 seven, but pretty consistently and keeps this room relatively dry. Um, yeah, PVA, PVA should be stored in the box. Um, should, please do, um, PVA. Um, people have actually been complaining about the Ultimate 3 where it has the open PVA spool on the back without any sort of cover how long that is going to last and going to stay printable and well I'm I, I, I haven't seen it in or I haven't gotten a chance to actually test it um, and just you know try it out by myself and just see how long that lasts out in the open by the way, guys, we've missed a few tips on stream trip um, from Primoz Bregles. Uh, thank you for all this. Matej Chapovic, hoping that I didn't butcher that. And from Patrick Fist, thanks for all the hard work and advice. Also, Josef Grana, thank you. You're awesome. Uh, thank you guys for, for the tips and not just for the tips, but for your general support of this channel and, and the stuff I'm doing here. Um, that's awesome. I'm, I'm really enjoying the work here. Um, right. Sweet. Let's move on. It's, I, we were saying do, do one more, but this is, this is too good. This is too good. Um, refresh and see what we can, we can. <laughs> uh, Joey Nuggets in, in chat is suggesting, what about diapers? Yeah, what about them? Um, basically saying, yeah, they have a, a bunch of moisture absorbing crap in them. I don't know how, how aggressively they will actually pull moisture out of the air. Um, as far as I know, they're more about absorbing moisture as in liquid moisture and not dissolved in, in, uh, in the air. So yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, Ah, yes, yes, yes. So this is, this is a good one. Um, now, three different benches, three different, well, two different extents of the same issue. Um, so this one over here obviously is perfect. This one has a slight amount of curl and this one has an amount of curl that goes over the entire front of the boat right there. Um, again, this is temperature related as many of the 3D printing issues um, are because you know, we are dealing with, you know, what is that flexion? Okay. We are dealing with relatively high temperature extrusion and, well, that sort of shows a little, and a lot of 3D printing is also just, you know, we're doing it the way we're doing it because it works without questioning the physics behind it that, that's sort of changing these days but a lot of it is still that mentality yeah it's we're doing it because it works right i've also got a few examples of these here so um i would say this one where's the camera this one is sort of you can see that the same thing there this one is sort of identical to the well it's in between the first and second um was it five? No. Uh, sort of identical to the, yep, to this first, second one right there. Um, this one is, what does it say? MK2 Prusa, yes, but this is a Filaflex with a profile that isn't really tuned in and also a piece of PEI because Flex just sticks incredibly well to PEI. Um, so I'm not going to be making that mistake ever again. Uh, <laughs> But also the same thing of curl right there. Then this one, this is a nylon printed with the flexion extruder system. We can also see sort of a, a curve down here. And this one is, wow, ABS on the TAS 6. So a very definitive curve on the very bottom here as well. And similar roughness down here. And all of these, are again temperature related. So this one with ABS, this one is a typical 
ABS, some people call it an elephant's foot. Um, and yeah, that, that's what you're going to see it referred to. So this happens when the heated bed is too hot. When you have the heated bed, heated bed cranked up so high for the parts to stick that they're actually softening up the lower layers. And um, yeah, instead of the, the next layer printing onto that and just, you know, having something to grab onto that contraction, that thermal contraction from the, from the new layer will actually pull the lower ones up. That's usually, you know, elephant's foot if it's like on the bottom of your print um, or curl if it's anywhere else. The heated bed has a huge effect on, on you know, how the lower layers of your prints are going to look. So pro tips there. Yeah, we can also see it on the, on the back here. That's a very similar artifact right there. Um, I'm hoping that is in focus, mostly. So yeah. Um, that's relatively easy to deal with, turn down your bed temperatures. However, if you turn down your heated bed temperatures, you know, these things might start lifting off of the bed. So it's, it's, sort, of a, it's sort of a dance with the devil. Either you turn your heated bed down far enough so that your, your prints come out clean, or you turn it up further so they stick. Um, ideally, you know, you need some sort of a temperature where you get both. And for me, the temperature is around 100 degrees Celsius. I was printing a lot of ABS earlier on at like 120 degrees uh, with a heated bed and I, I'd always designed my parts to compensate for this sort of an artifact. Um, so yeah, lower, lower bed temperature, lower print temperature also to a certain extent. Now, if it's PLA, it's relatively easy to deal with. Um, switch over here. Um, if it's PLA, it's relatively easy to do with just crank up the part cooling fan. If it's already at 100%, then probably, well, look <laughs> look at how your um, how your part cooling fan is set up and potentially print slower. And if it's you know if it's just a filament that doesn't work for you, try a different filament. There are many many different manufacturers out there these days. Just try a few different ones. Um, most of them are pretty good. Someone's asking in chat, are you using ventilation when printing ABS? Um, some people have reported success with printing ABS with a fan. Um, I've tried it. I've gotten horrible, horrible layer adhesions, so I wouldn't really recommend it. Um, if you really have a part that you need to print from ABS, where you don't care about the layer adhesion and where you need the fan, for overhangs, uh, for example, to come out well, then go for it. But otherwise, um, ABS should be printed without a fan and, you know, ideally in, in a perfect world, also with an enclosure around your printer um, and even, even like five or 10 degrees. So put a cardboard box over your printer. If you, you know, if you really need that low temperature heated bed, just put a cardboard box around it and it's not gonna warp as much. It's not gonna split the layers. Um, that much. So, yeah. That's that. Um, yeah, lower print temperatures, more print cooling, part cooling, and maybe a different filament. You see. Rough and all. Okay, one last one. This is easy. Um, that's over extrusion. <laughs> very, very, very simple. Um, that is over extrusion, so the, the layers get stuffed. Um, essentially, you know, extrusion multipliers or filament diameters, I rarely, rarely measure um, an actual filament diameter these days, though, you know, in a real, in, a, in an ideal world, you should. You should just go out and um, grab some, some calipers. Ideally, like dial calipers, these things are absolutely awesome. Um, grab that, measure your filament, go, oh yeah, it's 1.75, exactly. Um, good filament will be exactly 1.75 these days. Um, measure that filament diameter, put it in your slicer if you're using cheap filament that might have an inconsistent diameter. Um, these days, mostly I'm, you know, I'm not seeing much of a need to tune in 
Uh, actually, this thing has autofocus, so... Wow. These days I'm not seeing much of a, of a need to tune in uh, extrusion multiplier. So a top solid layer should look something like this. The Benchy has that entire area, the entire deck that is one solid layer. Um, it should be smooth, ideally. Let's get that reflection on there. Um, if it is overstuffed in any way, if I can find an example print, there, there are like 50 benches around here. Uh, this one is also smooth. You get the idea. If it is overstuffed like that, then that is very differently over extrusion. Uh, just tune down your extrusion multiplier or tune down the uh, filament diameter in the slicer. Very simple setting. Right there, so 1.75, that's ideally the one you want to measure. Um, extrusion multiplier, 1. And the tiniest adjustments go a very, very long way. So you don't have to, um, you don't have to tune it down or, or turn that extrusion multiplier to, to 80%, so 0 0.8. You know, try 5% increments. A 5% increment for, um, for this might be able to fix it already. And um, typically, you know, under extrusion is not going to show much of, a, of an issue in print quality. It might show if you're significantly under extruding. Um, it might show as gaps in the top solid layers. But if you're going for print quality, a bit lower extrusion rate is always going to help um, for quality. Yeah, Aaron York uh, 0 0.05 adjustments are enough. Exactly 5% at a time. And... You know, if during a print I'm seeing sort of under extrusion or over extrusion going on, usually I, I don't even do 5%. I do like 2% or, or 1%. And, you know, the, these sort of errors accumulate over the layers. So if you're seeing it on particularly the first layer where your nozzle height is going to influence the amount of, of material you're seeing for a certain thickness, um, or where that's going to influence it as well, um, then don't over overcompensate and go the other way. So, yeah, just go go with go with five percent. Go with go with two percent. Um, if that's uh, yeah, if it's necessary. Um, Theodal is saying extrusion width as well can help. Um, extrusion width should be at least these days should be independent from the flow rates. Um, from the amount of, of material your slicer puts out, it will automatically compensate for um, extrusion width. Um, so the, do I really want to go into detail? Just a quick note on extrusion width. Um, I used to print with like, what is it, 25% uh, more, so 125% of your nozzle diameter as an extrusion width. So a 0.4 millimeter nozzle would get a 0.5 millimeter extrusion width and that sort of worked out okay um, once printers got more consistent extrusion width got tuned down so to 0 0.45 is like the mark 2 default on lower layers even less um, it's more tricky to to get your prints consistent with lower extrusion widths um, however if, if you use larger extrusion widths um, then you're automatically or, or tenants you, your prints are going to have a tendency of looking just not as crisp overall. So there's the defaults right there. Um, now, okay, so it's using 0.44 top solid infills and otherwise 0 0.45. You can leave these um, at zero for defaults. So yeah, that would be, yeah, leave them on the defaults if, you, if you're unsure about that. So someone's asking, first of all, do I play BF1? Nope, I played BF4, but it's like, mm, pff, I've seen enough of it. And the other question is, can I do a short advice on all Twitter prints? All right, well, let's mow through these. And just the first thing that comes to my mind, don't want to leave anyone out. Right, um, Mr. Cat 7 ABS 0.3 millimeter layers, uh, 0.3 millimeter nozzle, 1.2 millimeter layers. Um, you don't need layers that are this thin. Go for some that are maybe 150 micron or something, 
and check your mechanics. This looks like, you know, your hot end is loose or some other part of your axes or belts are loose. Check that everything is tight. Check that, you know, you can't wiggle your hot end around. That's that. We covered this one, Moray got that. Um, this one, so there's a bit of fuzziness going on. Yeah, ripples, the ripples wouldn't be that much of an issue. Um, but wow, first of all, this looks like temperatures that are too hot. Um, also looks like a tiny, tiny bit of over extrusion. And yeah, this is obviously temperature issue melting down right there. Um, yeah. Maybe also a filament that's pulling up on the extruder that's just inconsistent. Um, but, all, but definitely too hot um, and the over extrusion. Yeah, you, you're pointing that out yourself. Um, as like I said, start with start with the most apparent issue, fix that, and then you're gonna have a clearer view at everything else that might be going wrong. Next up, the print left was from the Fabricator Mini. Not worried about that one, but the prints on the right from the i3 Plus. Uh, the prints on the right. So what's what's about the, the prints in the center, which have some sort of an extruder issue, um, where the extruder doesn't extrude as much as you want so either that's a hot end that's clogging a hot end that's jamming because it's just badly made um, or the extruder not or, or a clogged nozzle that that's also something that's still happening um, and this one on the right this looks like a micro stepping issue a bit of z wobble i don't really have a scale for this but i'm thinking i don't know this might be a micro stepping issue tune occurrence and um, tuning currents, also check your pulleys and belts. This could also be a belt pattern um, if you're not using something like a GT or HTD profile. <laughs> we're, okay, we're doing screenshot section there. Um, almost as if the filament is bubbling. So this is with the nozzle probably too close to the bed. Um, you can actually see this better here. Um, nozzle too close to the bed and yeah tearing up the the old layers um, also general tip for general tip for getting your first layer to stick um, if you don't have super fine details on the first layer I actually have a print of this ah I know which one they are the filler sense project so first layer how to get them to stick, uh, that's the one. So this is a, a filament diameter sensor that I've designed a while ago. Um, you know, sort of, you, you, you sort of don't need it these days because filament has gotten much, much better. Um, but what you can see here, maybe if the lighting is right, uh, this was extruded with a very, very wide, I think almost a two millimeter wide extrusion width and a high layer height. This, these are like two or three year old prints. Um, and that essentially, you know, going with a wider layer width and a taller extrusion height or, or layer height and uh, extrusion width, upping those for the first layer, just to make sure that, um, your, your printer is not going to care about your nozzle distance as much as well as, you know, if you have a bed that is slightly inconsistent or, or warped or whatever, it's also going to even up some of those, um, high and low spots. Let's blast through here. What is this? So that also sort of looks like an extrusion issue. Going from 60 to 90% outline overlap in Simplify 3D almost fixes it. I'm, I'm not really seeing what's happening here. So either that's a, 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 a bevel in here that's supposed to print um, or the perimeter is just peeling up. I'm, I'm just not seeing that. I, I'd need like a better image of that to, to really diagnose it. Oh yeah, <laughs> same issue as before. So ESUN PLA, um, too hot, um, part cooling not enough. This thing looks generally pretty much melted together a bit. Um, and also slicer settings, slick theory is particularly sensitive to like curved top layers where 
doesn't fill them in properly, it doesn't support them properly. Um, let's add less temperature, more top solid layers, and a different slicer or a different filament. Got that, got that. So what's going on here? So there is ripples and under extrusion. I mean, these are just, what are these? Yeah, so that's that's belt over swing. So with the um, yeah accelerations too acceleration settings too high, and maybe the belt's also a bit too weak or too loose. Um, this right here I can't really explain because it's not in line with any of the artifacts on the other uh, surfaces. Well, actually, it might be the same thing we we, we were talking about earlier um, with. Your stepper motor is not micro-stepping properly. It might actually be exactly that issue on the extruder motor. So again, tune occurrence for the extruder motor, try a different stepper driver, try a different um, stepper motor. Just the combination of all of those together um, might help there. And this one sort of looks like a jamming issue on um, on the hot end, um, where something in the hot end gets too hot, restricts filament flow, and um, yeah, gets stops the filament from flowing properly. Very well. Next up, left delta printer with E3DB6, right Affini bot Chinese knockoff with original parts. Okay. Well, translucent prints, prints are always hard to judge as far as their quality goes. So what's going on there? Let's compare that to another one. Okay, so that's how it's supposed to look. Right, okay. Um, also, part cooling, check that. Uh, check your print temperatures and I don't know, I'm getting a seam in a similar position, but not quite there. And also this one, this one looks like something is resonating. Something is oscillating. Something is not staying aligned to where it's supposed to be. Right, yeah, and these are... That is weird. That is actually a pretty weird artifact because this is not lined up with anything else. It might just be something in the Delta kinematic. Is he saying this is a Delta printer? This might just be something that's, you know, dragging in the Delta kinematic. We're getting sort of the same effect on the, um, on a completely different printer on the Affinibot, which I find interesting. I really can't explain that. It might be, actually, it might be the infill poking through. That's, that's the one explanation that I'd have for that because this is a sort of a sloped surface right there. Um, this might be like the print head. Yeah. So infill, obviously, like the, the crisscross pattern. Um, extruder head moves towards the perimeter. So on the inside of the part, moves towards the perimeter, tries to stop, overshoot because the entire kinematics platform is elastic. Overshoots, goes beyond where the perimeter would be, the outer visible layer, and then goes back the other way. And once the perimeter prints, it actually has material there where material shouldn't, and you keep seeing that to the outside. And that's sort of what I think this might be. So, right there. Yeah, that might be the info poking through. So, less acceleration. Um, yeah. Less acceleration. That's that's sort of my guess there. And the yeah, that's just the that right there. That's just the throat. That's supposed to be like that. Of course, stringing, but that would be the least of my concerns because, again, stringing and like material deposition on the outside of the print, you can just rub that off and get rid of it um, manually after a print. We've looked at this one. Oh yeah. FT5 rippling, um, yep. Now, if you have a look at, you know, at, at the forces between 
or behind tensioning a belt. Theoretically, a tensioned belt should not get rid of rippling artifacts like that. However, in practice it does. Um, and I think that's not because the, the actual fibers in the belt get tensioned and stretched and like pre-tensioned, um, but because the teeth in the pulley actually get pressed into the pulley and um, pre-tensioned there. So that's number one, tension your belly, <laughs> tension your belly, <laughs> tension your belts and check your pulleys. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> as I was saying, <laughs> as I was saying, uh, tension your belly, tension your belts and check your pulleys. Uh, <laughs> um, do that. Um, lower acceleration. That's always like the one big thing. Um, so I, I keep pointing this out with a lot of different printers. When I see a printer that prints slowly that has low accelerations, the atom actually got criticized for that because it's like, yeah, it's, it's accelerating pretty slowly. So even if you put in like 200 millimeters a second print speed, it's like still, it's not even accelerating to that. Yes. But I will always prefer prints that have clean results that you only need to print once and maybe wait five or ten percent longer on that to finish. So, yeah, uh, do your setups, get good prints, um, and take it slow. Take your take your accelerations down. Take jerk settings as Marlin calls them, or um, what are they like? immediate velocity change settings. Take those down, just make your printer slower. You can accelerate up to higher speeds on like straight lines, but take it slow. It's, it's only gonna benefit your print quality. Um, same in that case. Also, obviously, like I said, check, check your bellies and you should be good there. And before we forget about them, I think I've seen some, some stream, stream tip pop-ups as well. Uh, duplicate five years. Thank you for that. Um, uh, Aram Equin one uh, Tom, I made a printer using the shape Oco two platform. Your videos are the reason it works somewhat. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> somewhat. I don't know if that's a compliment or, or a criticism. My printers make your work. Uh, my, my videos make your printers work somewhat. <laughs> Sweet. And um, from and Tesla 66, also Marty Ennison, awesome, thanks. Uh, Spike Kent, did I, did I already read it out? I don't know. Anyways, thanks for the tips, guys. Um, always appreciate it. And maybe one day I can actually get a new laptop just to keep these streams from, from stopping. I don't know what's going on there. Um, OBS Studio, I'm, I'm using OBS Studio to stream. Let's just pull that over here quickly and switch to the screen cap. So that's that's what I'm seeing. Uh, there's my OBS studio setup and it's like, yeah, I'm seeing the, the bit rate going up and, and suddenly it's just, yeah, it's just up uploading audio and that's it. I don't know what's, what's going on there. It's not giving me an error message or anything. It just cuts out. No idea. Let's move on here. So we've discussed this one essentially, again, turn down temperatures, um, more top solid layers, do that. Um, and this one. We've, we've sort of discussed this one already. Um, <laughs> um, we've got curling going on on the bow. That is actually, that is a deliberate test feature of the Benchy. Um, Daniel Nore, uh, who designed these Benchies, did an incredibly good job at, you know, implementing as many, as many test cases into these things as possible. Maybe in a second, if you still have time, well, we're already, we're closing down fast on the two hour mark. Um, maybe we can just have a look at, at what the features are in the Benchy that you should be looking for, because let's be honest, you just shouldn't be printing test cubes. Please don't do it. Don't print those, those 10 millimeter test cubes. They're pointless to do. You got the same features in the Benchy plus everything else in there as well. So yeah, um, this one, again, temperature is too high add more cooling. If it's PLA, yes, add more part cooling. Um, that's, that's definitely a problem here. Um, and if it's on a heated bed, this one also turn down the heated bed temperature. Um, 
you'd be surprised at how long, how long, how low the temperature of PLA still sticks. Um, on most PEI beds or, you know, if you're using any sort of, of other purpose-made uh, build surface, you know, you might get away with no heated bed at all on PEI. It's like 50, 50C or something. You should be good there. We've got that. That is classic Z-wobble um, lines. That's the restart lines. Ah, yeah. Okay. ABS Ultimaker 2 Plus extended with three top bottom layers. Yeah, um, you guys might have seen this on your own prints. It's a very typical thing to see. And, you know, essentially what's happening here is, well, the way I'm, I'm explaining it here is um, you've got your infill. You're obviously seeing the infill pattern poke through on top here. And as the... As the layer gets closed off, um, it's bonding to to where the infill actually, where, where the, the actual infill lines um, touch your top solid layer. And then between them, it bows up and you're actually seeing a positive bump. You're seeing a, a positive amount being, being deposited or being accumulated there. And the only way so far I've, I've figured out to get rid of it is to use more top solid layers um, or to use a finer infill structure, so a higher infill density. Yeah. And I know this can be annoying, but yeah, this is sort of on the on the verge of, of not filling in properly as well. Um, maybe again, using a, a lower temperature can help with this because the, the filament is going to be stiffer in bridge closer or tighter across these these info gaps but yeah it's just a normal part of of uh of having prints like that that was one of the first ones we talked about that warping off a single layer and blobs on the chimney um oh yeah okay that's actually a nice picture, right? Um, right here. So this this might be part of what I what I um, what I talked about as far as Z wobble goes. So with Z wobble, you either have the Z axis, uh, or you either have the Z axis influencing the rest of the of the X axis, um, where it's just doing a spiral pattern upwards, or where it's actually doing a a spiral and height shift pattern. This is obviously um, not like once once it does that amount of, of, of height shifting, you're in a bad place. But once the, the Z-axis tilts and just doesn't wobble like that, you might actually see a different height of your nozzle um, for each turn. So on something like this, um, again, check your Z-axis. That's like the first one because parts with holes like that are going to break incredibly easily. Um, check the z-axis that you know get rid of any wobble there then the overshoot here reduce accelerations and the blobs up here are the same blobs that we were seeing before as the lines on the outside um, oh wow these blobs right there reduce reduce retraction settings and maybe lower temperature it's always low temperature is always like one of the one of the big tips for for getting better print quality if you don't care about the strength of your parts, tune down the temperature and you should be good. And same thing here. So yeah, this, again, this might be, this might be the Z-axis um, actually causing your tool head to, to lift up and down, or it might be, it might also be the filament pulling up. Um, so yeah, check those things and you should be good. And one last one. Right. And this is, so this is, at first I, I was looking at this one and going like, okay, there's, there's like something going on here, but these lines there, some weird blobs, waves on straight lines. Um, again, very simple, infill poking through um, with just your kinematics platform being too soft. When the, when the tool head reaches the, the edge where it should stop, it goes past where it should be and, you know, deposits material into the path where the info or the, the perimeter should be and causes those sort of blobs. So yeah, um, 
I, I feel like I'm repeating myself here, but lower acceleration in jerk settings because if you're getting artifacts like that, you're also going to get artifacts like that on, um, say, sharp corners elsewhere on your prints. Ready then. Um, let's have a look at chat. So, uh, I sort of don't want to go into Core XY because Core XY just comes up in every stream and I'm like, why? It's just, it's just another kinematics platform. Um, bum, 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 bum. And no, the, the Ultimaker 2 is not Core XY. Let's do one last thing and look at what features you've got, you've got on the on the 3 Benchy to um, to test for it because like, like I said there are a lot of things that you can uh, diagnose with a single 3D Benchy print. Boom. Right. 3D Benchy. Let's start out with the... Wow, I'm seeing heavy more ray on, on my previous screen. Let's start out with the obvious one. So you've got the test which we already discussed uh, down here for curling, for heated beds being too hot. If you, if you see something like, like this, like an elephant's foot down here, where it just bows inwards instead of going like continuously smoothly up, then a lower bed temperature and um, increased part cooling. You're getting the equivalent of a test cube. Where's focus? There. This thing back here, this thing is your test cube. So um, the width of this one, let's see what it is on this particular print. So it's 12.88 millimeters on this one. Um, but that is your that is your reference um, block there. That thing has a set size, and you're supposed to like get close or as closely as possible to the outside and the inside um, dimensions. You're supposed to let's retry that. And there are set dimensions that these things should have on the on the outside and on the inside, obviously as well. Um, you're getting the text on the back. Yes. Um, on a lot of printers, this text on the back actually doesn't show up particularly well. You need, uh, where's my focus plane? There it is. Um, you need the, yeah, you, you need a relatively low layer height and actually also a, a small, um, a small nozzle diameter to, uh, to be able to read this text, to make this text out. There's also text on the bottom. There we go. CT3D.xyz, that's the domain where um, this entire test package is, is hosted and I think you can find a lot of descriptions um, on the Benchy there. And essentially if you smoosh down your first layer too much, that text is going to disappear, I think. Does, is that a new feature? Because I've got prints where it's like completely invisible. Um, anyways, yep. Yeah. That's just the bottom layer. If that text is like smooshed together, if it doesn't have that indentation there, then uh, your first layer might be too low. Then up here we have a blurry image. Up here we have a perfectly planar surface. So that's like top solid layers. Um, some of the things we, we were seeing before where we got those little bumps or where this didn't fill in completely and left little holes. Um, that's where this one tests for up front. We've got a small, tiny, tiny bridges test. Um, I know it's it's really short, but this thing bridges from there to there. Um, what else? We've got relatively fine, well, comparatively fine um, walls here and there. So ideally you want those filled in all the way. That's just slicer settings and slicer performance. If you're seeing a gap in here, then there's a setting wrong new slicer. Up top here, right there. Um, don't know if this is in focus, but this is a slightly sloped surface. So if you're seeing gaps here, that's also a problem with your slicer. Um, we've got this little tiny hole in the back here. 
It's just a details test and we got a similar thing here on the back. There's a hole and a uh, cylindrical shape on the, on the side there. That's also for fine tiny details because this, especially this part up here, um, where's one where it didn't turn out so well. But these, these benches are all too good. Let's grab an older one. Yeah, you can see a few issues with this one. Yeah. For example, this one, this is an older print in ABS. It's also completely overexposed. You can see it like, uh, let's get the light out of this one. Um, so this, this part down back here is, is relatively molten together. It's, there's not much detail left. So that's just a, a small details test. Um, also in this one, which is also white. Let's correct the exposure. There we go. Um, you're sort of seeing some extrusion issues, um, which just doesn't fill in all the way. So that's, that's something that's checking for. Then the chimney up top is a cooling test um, because this is, if you look at the, the layers, how this is printed. So this is roughly from this height here. This is the only feature that's printed. So the tool head is going to stay here. Um, if your minimum layer time is set too low and actually ends up um, like pumping too much heat into your parts, the chimney isn't going to come out well. So if this one melts down, um, increase minimum, minimum layer time and reduce extrusion temp. What else? I think there's like a, a dozen more features in here that we can discuss. Um, but I think that should be all the, the relevant ones. In a, in a nice world, the broadcast keeps cutting out. Right now it's going smoothly, actually. Um, in an ideal world, you just have one parameter to worry about, um, except that the difficult one is making out the, the most striking one, the most, um, yeah, the, the issue that is the most pressing at the time and fixing that one first, and then, you know, being able to, to move on to one after the other. Aaron York, you, you keep asking what's planned for the next stream. I don't know what's planned for the next stream. I've got a few things lined up. However, I don't know if the packages are going to show up in time. So we'll see. It's it's a mystery. Um, right. Broadcast keeps cutting out. Crap. Right. That's the three Benchy. Um, I guess unless there are any super striking questions left um i think we've we've got it so far yeah um very well i'm hoping that was educational for you guys and um learned something maybe i even looked at one of your tweets and um yeah if you're seeing a good improvement in what your, you know, what, what your prints are looking at. Um, tweet me a picture, again, using hashtag 3D Senpai. Um, tweet it at me. I'd love to see your results. And don't just tweet your, your, um, your broken and, and bad prints. If you have a particularly awesome print, um, also tweet that at me. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd really enjoy seeing those. Right. Um, right here, it's 5 till 8 p.m. Um, I'm going to edit another <laughs> another Halloween episode, um, I think. Do I have one in the pipeline? Maybe. I think so. Right. Um, anyways, thanks everyone for being here. Thanks for your um, tweets. Thanks for, for the donations, tips, um, and thanks for being here again. Um, we're going to see each other next Sunday as well. There is going to be a stream, definitely. Um, like I said, I don't know which the topic is going to be exactly but something something machine unboxing probably probably right um yeah that's it see you have a nice rest of sunday or the parts of the world where it's already monday <laughs> yeah um adios see you guys